Hello everyone, this is Joe, Four Soft Corners here, and for today I am doing a video response for John over at 3D80's Kid, and um, <clears throat> so he's doing a contest where um, he wants us to um, talk about our hobby obsessions, and I'm going to do my best to not ramble on for like 30 minutes, but there's definitely a possibility that happens, but um, so when I first thought about this, I thought about like just um thought about how I wanted to approach it or what I you know how I collect and the way it's obsessive in any way um and then as I thought about it a little bit it really really kind of like struck home and it's there's a way I collect and it's definitely obsessive and it's a constant like kind of routine or cycle the way I do it um but it pretty much perfectly describes the way I collect and it's at times super frustrating and um, I guess I shouldn't say frustrating but it definitely makes what I'm maybe trying to accomplish harder but at the end of the day it's all fun so um, so first off we'll say my first obsession is I am a completionist um, so outside of cards just when I'm just doing random tasks, like say around the house or anything, I'll start one thing, but then like there's something else I think I should um, be doing first. So then I'd start that and then kind of just find where I'm doing multiple things at once and I'm probably not finishing any one thing any quicker. Um, I used to do this, I played video games for years. Um, I was like Call of Duty, me and my friends would play and there'd be like challenges to do in there and it was a game where it would be like a one year cycle um by the next year you know I'd no longer play that game and I'd play a new one and I would try to do things to all right I have to finish this challenge or do this and if I would have played the game for three years I probably couldn't have finished it but um I would start it and just try to but I would never actually do it so <clears throat> for collecting as um you know, I got back in in 2013 and really was just opening boxes and stuff. Um, but around like 2019, 2020 is when I started collecting vintage and went into that right away as um, pretty much as a set builder. Um, took on the 1960 top set, completed that, uh, and then went to 1959 tops. Got thought just do one set at a time. I got about halfway through and kind of just got bogged down to where. I wasn't finding stuff super quick anymore um, at good prices. I didn't want to buy something just to buy it if it wasn't a good price. So kind of just got in that rut and then it led to where I wasn't picking as much stuff up um, just so I wasn't having as much fun with it. So um, I would say, like I said, my first obsession is I'm a completionist. I like to complete things and that's kind of, I take on these things and uh, it might be something that's small, maybe just picking up a card or two of a person, and then right away I think well, I might as well just go for his whole playing run, but um, it doesn't usually end up being completed. And um, <clears throat> so, like I said, with the set thing, I went from 59 and kind of stopped, and then I was starting to just pick up cards at deals whenever I found them. And that's when I started my crazy thing, thinking I was going to build every set. Um, so I had every checklist printed out from 1950 to 1980 and um, just figured whenever I pick them up, I'll cross them off. But like it was really, I mean, as I started the beginning of this year, I started and I focused in on 53 tops and trying to complete that. And, you know, the realization when I needed, you know, the last couple big cards, the satchel page and then the mantle. Like I was thinking about how hard it was going to be just to save up for that one card and then to think about every set. If I take on 54 tops, those three big rookies, which I don't have any of, um, 55 tops, I have the Koufax and Killebrew, but I don't have the Clemente and that's as big or a bigger card than the 53 tops mantle. And then I love 67 tops, but the Tom Seaver is going to be a really difficult one. So, um, yeah so 
first obsession is I'm a completionist, but um, that need to always complete um, something kind of comes and goes. So <clears throat> we'll describe this whole process. Like I said, it's cyclical. We'll kind of call, call it a hobby, wash, rinse, repeat, which I know is ironic since I don't have any hair <laughs> to really do that with, but um, we'll, we'll still call it wash, rinse, and repeat. So then my second obsession, what we'll say, we'll, we'll go back to one eventually then. Um, my second obsession is losing focus. So um, I'm six minutes in this video and you can probably tell that already just by the way I talk or the way I think, <laughs> um, losing focus. But when it comes to the hobby, um, I kind of did it when I, like I said, I got stalled out with the set collecting, then I maybe went into more player collecting for a little bit, and then went back to set collecting, thinking I was going to complete every set. Um, that didn't work, so then I went back to just 53. Um, and then after that, I got into autographs. Um, that's been a huge part. Um, went back to 53, um, finished that. And then in the meantime, uh, I have a huge box here. I'm not gonna lift that up, but um, I picked up my Tony Gwynn, a huge lot of Tony Gwynn cards. Um, after I kind of thought, I'm just gonna, you know, pick up smaller cards of players, and I ended up picking a 1600 card lot up of Tony Gwynn because I got it for like $160 shipped. So. <clears throat> you know, like less than 10 cents a card. Um, ended up with like almost 700 unique cards here. And then I guess I should show some cards in the video. So then wanted one big, big card to define that collection. So picked up this 93 Tops Finest Refractor. Um, so yeah, just all over, I'm obsessed with losing focus, but, um, I definitely, uh, then after that, <laughs> I got gifted, um, well, I guess before going that, so, yeah, did the Tony Gwynn, then I decided, well, not decided, but, um, I figured I wanted to get into, um, doing TTM, so I sent one out, uh, got a TTM back from Ron Guidry, um, but then I decided before, thought, well, what other guys can I send out to? And I'd start looking through cards, and I'd find somebody, oh, there's an address for them. I'd pull two cards out. I'm like, well, are these the best two cards I want to do? So then I would start, <clears throat> I start the process of, I wanted to catalog my whole collection, <laughs> which is, um, again, the completionist in me wanted to have everything in TCDV so I could just look up card if I want to find it it'll be in this box sorted by year if I want to find cards of certain players I can look up by player and go through year by year and find so I wanted to do that but um, I've had boxes started um, I have some of it organized but then in the middle of that I got gifted you know a lot of late 80s early 90s junk wax and 90 one or 92 and 93 Don Ross and 93 Leaf. Um, so I ended up opening all those boxes. So I have on top of what I already had, I already have that to go through. <laughs> that if I want to organize everything like by number order by year, uh, I just added onto it. So, um, like I said, it's definitely a non stop with that. Um, so we'll get to the last one. Um, part three of the obsession, which is just having fun with it. Um, I'm obsessed with having fun and the nostalgia of collecting. So whether it's <clears throat> tracking down the cards for sets, whether it's tracking down cards for the Tony Gwynn PC, whether it's just ripping open a box of 93 Leaf because I did that as a kid and it's taken me back 30 years to when I did that. Um, I have fun with all that and I greatly, greatly appreciate the nostalgic aspect of that, of just feeling like a kid again, um, you know, still having fun with the hobby and all that. 
So that just keeps it going and keeps perpetuating all of it to where I don't get bogged down. I don't get, you know, over it. I mean, yeah, maybe there'll be times where I don't organize cards. I have everything pointing to a box that's 1950 Bowman through 1981 tops right now. Um, I have all that organized, um, but maybe I'll go through two or three week period where I, I don't really do anything as far as organizing cards and more so just make videos or watch videos, which I'm on, always doing. Um, but um, maybe I'm not picking up cards as much, um, but then I'll go my local mall. Um, I was trying to save stuff up for the national next year, but then uh, had a local mall show here, um, had two within the last month. I went to both of them and uh, didn't show off the latest one yet, but. At one show, had a big stack of cards, and this is from the last show. Have this big stack of cards here, um, but was you know pretty low cost in the general sense of it, and um, just like I said, it's it all goes back to just ha I had fun with it, and that's what just keeps keeps it going on. Like I said, I I'll go through periods um, going back to I, I thought. I'm not going to build a lot of these sets just because of the big cards. So maybe I shouldn't pick any up. And then um, uh, by this time, yeah, so I th believe I released a video where um, uh, Will, um, friend of the community, Will, through um, Jake, sent me a huge box of just uh, cards from like 51 Bowman to I believe 80 tops, anything, there were 54 tops, 55 tops, just a bunch of different cards in there, and like it kind of, it didn't, it didn't start me down the path of thinking, oh, I'm going to complete all these again, but um, in the past, maybe I thought I was going to thin some of this down and use some of the sales from some of these, but I don't think that's really going to get me very far, and at the end of the day, well, I may not, it may take me years and years to even remotely pick up enough cards to think about completing some of these sets. I have a representation um, of some of these years, and uh, if I ever just want to look through, you know, 52 Bowmans, I have a couple here. If I want to look through, you know, I can just do that and have players within the years. And then eventually when I get things organized, I guess I could start doing it with this because I have all, pretty much all my vintage organized by year. I can start, um, if anybody, you know, if any of those guys are alive yet, and sign TTM and have addresses out there, try and send some of those out and where I may not be completing the set, I still have those examples, um, which I think that would be really cool. So um, like I said, those are my obsessions and we'll call it hobby, wash, rinse and repeat because um, they're all obsessions at times like I said they may bog me down a little bit where I'm getting in my own way as far as being able to complete anything um, may get frustrating from the aspect of um, I may you know if I'm saving up for like when I was saving up for the mantle there was lots of cards that came um, in that period that I would have liked to pick up ultimately didn't and now there's some I wish I did um, and maybe just even if it would would have took another month of saving up for the mantle in order to, I, I wish I would have maybe bought it but um, only get frustrated from that aspect of it that um, like I said I'm always getting in my own way but I don't let it get me stressed out to any point because then it always like I said takes me back to that third obsession and it's just obsessed with having fun in this hobby and um, like I said that goes with the cards and with the people in it and um, yeah so that's what I have to say um, did not show many cards this video but um, if anybody's able to make sense of what I said I, I feel like it greatly describes um, kind of the way it is for me and maybe for a lot of people um, and I mean I call them obsessions like I said it's um, by nature, uh, 
I diagnose myself with OCD sometimes. I not I don't want to sound offensive to anybody that actually is diagnosed or but I mean I definitely am super I definitely have a lot of um you know things have to be in a certain order sometimes and just get really out of sync if it's not um but um I said I, I just think it perfectly encapsulates the way I collect um just that that endless cycle of just going back and it, it, it all works on itself and it just you know the, the end result is just having fun so that's basically how I wanted to get that out um but thank you again John for doing this I believe anybody interested um well first off if you're not subscribed to John please go subscribe to John at 3D 3D 80s kid and then um I believe you have until December 18th to enter this contest if you are interested. So um, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, John. And just remember, any card can be a great looking card even if it has four soft corners. Thank you.